But what we have here is a situation where two guerrillas, the Chinese and the Americans, are going to go head to head and in an intense security competition. And there is going to be a serious chance that they end up shooting at each other and that you have a real war between them. I'm not saying that's likely. I'm just saying that is a serious possibility. There's this concept in international politics called the security dilemma. And the security dilemma is going to make this situation all that much worse. What exactly is the security dilemma? The security dilemma says that anything that one side does for defensive purposes to defend itself is invariably seen by the other side as offensive in nature. You know, there's all this talk in the wake of Secretary of State Pompeo being here about putting missiles in places like Australia, Guam, South Korea, and Japan. These are these intermediate range ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. The Chinese say, Chinese have lots of these missiles, by the way. The Chinese say, our missiles are defensive missiles. Your missiles are offensive <laughs> missiles. We, of course, think exactly the opposite. Their missiles are offensive weapons, and what we're doing is for defensive purposes. So what happens in this situation is you get this arms race going, and of course you can see the arms race happening already. Pivot to Asia, right? You get this arms race going, and the end result is that everything the Chinese do to defend themselves we see as evidence that they're offensively oriented and vice versa. And this just exacerbates the situation. So there's big trouble ahead. You know what happened when the Chinese were weak? It's called the century of national humiliation. Chinese know what happens when you're weak. Other great powers pick on you. You don't want to be weak in this system. You want to be really powerful. If you're Chinese and you have two choices, one, you can be 20 times more powerful than Japan, or number two, Japan can be 20 times more powerful than you. Which one do you think they'll choose? They won't even think twice to answer they want to be 20 times more powerful than Japan. You want to be 20 times more powerful than any other great power in your region and every other great power on the planet if you can. Why? Because it's the best way to survive in a system with no higher authority. So the Chinese are determined to be very powerful. They're feeling really good about the fact that they're growing economically and translating that economic might into military might. And I don't blame them one bit. It's one thing I like about being an American. We are Godzilla. I don't have to worry about the survival of the United States of America. If you're a small country and you live next door to one of those gorillas, you better be really careful. Cuba? They got uppity with us. You remember when Fidel Castro was running the place? We still have not forgiven them. Right? You want to be big. You want to be powerful. Remember the Monroe Doctrine. You want to get the Americans out of East Asia. Right? You don't want the Americans around. We have the Monroe Doctrine. And as my mother taught me when I was a little boy, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Don't you think they're going to have a Monroe Doctrine? They'll tell you behind closed doors, when we get powerful enough, we're driving the Americans out beyond the first island chain, and then we'll drive them out beyond the second island chain. And again, I don't blame them one bit. If I'm Chinese, that's exactly what I want. I do not want American aircraft and American ships running up and down my coastline. The Americans go ballistic when any foreign country drives military forces into the Western Hemisphere. Some of you are probably old enough to remember the Cuban Missile Crisis. You remember how excited we got when we discovered that there were missiles in Cuba. And then the Soviets talked about putting a naval base at Cienfuegos. We told them in no uncertain terms, you ain't building a naval base at Cienfuegos. This is our hemisphere. We've got this thing called the Monroe Doctrine. Stay out. Well, you know, again, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So what I'm telling you here is that the Chinese are going to try to dominate Asia for good strategic reasons. And that includes pushing the Americans out. Then the question you have to ask yourself is what are the Americans going to do? I just told you what the Americans are going to do. We do not tolerate peer competitors. We've got four good examples that shows you how in the past we have reacted. The United States is going to get right in their face 
And it's going to say, you're not going to dominate Asia. You're not going to become a regional hegemon. It is unacceptable to us. And of course, many of China's neighbors, all you have to do is go to Japan, South Korea, I believe Australia, Taiwan, Singapore, India, right? They do not want to see China become a regional hegemon. So it's not going to just be the Americans. It's going to be the Americans along with a balancing coalition of other countries that are going to try to contain China. And of course, at the same time, the Chinese are going to try to expand. So what you're getting now, and you're going to get much more of, and it's a tragedy here, as Tom told you, the title of my book is The Tragedy of Great Power Politics. This is a tragic situation. I'm not happy about this. In fact, I hope I'm proved wrong. 